Yeah, hi, my name is Pedro, and I'm a, vo a volunteer from the Wisconsin Nutrition Education Program. And I'm Joy, a nutrition educator. And today we are making meatloaf with veggies. And for this recipe, you would need two pounds lean ground beef or turkey, one cup bread, crumbs, oatmeal or cooked rice, uh, one uh, cup finely chopped vegetables, mm -hmm. onions, green peppers, carrots, zucchini, and or spinach, two eggs beaten, one teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon pepper, one half teaspoon garlic powder, and one fourth cup ketchup. And for the topping, you would need uh, one half a cup ketchup. All right, okay, great. so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, chop the veggies first. Then right. we can go ahead and get the meat going. Got to get them real fine, though. You want to finely chop your carrots so that they easily blend in with the meat, and then while it's cooking, the meat will stick with all the different um, things. And our vegetables today that we're going to use, you can see celery, onion, and carrots. But like we said in the ingredient list, that you could use spinach, um, green pepper, zucchini. You could finely grate some zucchini in. It's a good way to sneak in the vegetables. You might want to do those a little. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Good. And it's always good to wash your vegetables first before you actually start cooking them. Yep. Nice job. A tip at home if you have a um, slippery cutting board like we do here is you could um, wet a wet a dishcloth and then stick it underneath here so that you don't have the sliding around if you don't have somebody to hold your cutting board for you. Get our chop up our celery. Do you ever put veggies in your meatloaf at home, Pedro? Sometimes. Okay. What kind of things would you use in yours? Basically the same stuff. Okay. Celery and onion. Yeah. I use hot sauce though too. Ooh, okay. Yep. Along with the ketchup, you could add a little bit of hot sauce. Um, some people make meatloaf with the oyster sauce. That can get kind of spendy though. So ketchup or the chili sauce or hot sauce, those all work well. Try and get these real fine. Yep. This way there's not taking up all the room in the meat. Now we're going to chop the job. onion. And don't worry if you can't use a big knife like this right away in your kitchen if you don't have a lot of experience. Um, you know, the more you practice with a big knife like this will give you more um, experience to use it quickly like Pedro can. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, right? Yeah, it does. I even cut my finger one time doing this. I know, you gotta be careful. <laughs> and sometimes if you use too small of a knife, that can be dangerous too, because then okay, your fingers get in the way of the small That's good right there. All right. Okay, now we can go ahead and break up the meat. And you can go okay. ahead and crack those eggs. Yes, it's already And I'm gonna wear the gloves, I mean, at home, you, you really don't have to, but... I'll put this in here for you. It's always good. I'm going to wear it this way. Don't get my hands all dirty. And when I put this in, I want to make sure that I wash my hands afterwards. Because whenever we touch raw meat of any sort, even hot dogs, you want to make sure that you're washing your hands because we never know what kind of bacteria may, may be on the raw meat. you got to break it go. all down. And after that, we can go ahead and add the vegetables. After the, I do that, I'm going to add the bread, the breadcrumbs, but I'm going to have to chop them up a little bit because it's, it's sort of big right there. When you wash your hands at home, you want to make sure that you're using soap and warm water and that you're scrubbing them for at least 20 seconds, especially when you're using things like, touching things like raw meat and eggs. Oh yeah, you can also use uh, crackers. Mm -hmm. You can use a lot of stuff, like and it, like I said on the recipe, like oatmeal and all that. It helps like keep it together. Yep, it binds the product together. Same with the eggs. Go ahead and add these in there. And then if you use the bread like we did, um, we put it in the toaster so that it got a little bit more crumbly for us, not so moist. I'm going to go ahead and add the seasoning to this. And I'll beat the eggs for them. When you get them nice and combined, then you can add it Push in. Push it all together. And you're going to wear, are you wearing your gloves? No, I took okay. them off. Okay, that's all right. 
You can do it with gloves on at home, or you can do it, just dig right in, right? <laughs> yep. All right. Go ahead and add the eggs. Pour it all in. It's nice and colorful. Sort of messy job, but it's, it's good <laughs> once it's done. You gotta make sure all the uh, veggies and meat are all mixed in real good. This way there's not uh, too much stuff in just one spot. And we're gonna, once he gets it all mixed together, he's gonna, Pedro's gonna form um, four loaves inside of our cake pan. And you don't need to grease the cake pan because usually there's enough fat in the meat. Um, so when the juices start flowing, it won't stick to your pan. Another way, if you didn't wanna do the four different loaves in here, um, Pedro said at his house, they just lay it all out in here so that it's, it's you end up with a flatter meatloaf, but yeah. still tastes the same. And it might just take a little bit longer to cook like that. You can also use um, bread cake or bread pans like this. And you just fill them up and do the same thing. You would need about four of these small ones, so if you did two pounds of meat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing okay. this. Get into a nice square looking like thing. Kind of like little logs. Yeah. <laughs> messy though. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of our way. The fun thing about meatloaf is that um, you can make it all different sorts of ways so if you have a special way to make it at home you can make it your way or you can tweak it with certain things here and there and it all ends up tasting good. Do you eat meatloaf at your house like all year round or is there a certain time of year when you like to eat it? Just occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. I like it when it starts getting cold outside and it's a nice warm meal. So there you go, that's the basics of making meatloaf. So. You After go ahead this, I'll wash my hands, yeah. and she's going to pop that in the oven. We're going to, actually, we're going to add this ketchup to it, so. Oh, well, yeah, I almost forgot While he's that. washing his hands, I'll start with the ketchup, and then I'll let you finish the rest. So we want to take the half a cup of ketchup, and you want to um, brush it over the top. Now, some people pop the meatloaf in the oven and then let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then they take it out and put the ketchup on so that it kind of gets a um, little bit of a crusty top to it and by putting this on the meatloaf right away it, it will get more cooked into the meatloaf. So it just depends on how you like to make it. I'll let you finish I'm those two if you want. Okay. Quick. And we've got a lot to use so just lay it on thick. <laughs> and some people like more ketchup than mm -hmm. uh, half a cup so you can go ahead and use as much as you guys like. And we mentioned the chili sauce before. Sometimes people put that on the top. Where do you put your hot sauce? On the top or inside the meatloaf? No, after, I, after it's made, I just dump it on top of okay. when I'm getting ready to eat it. A nice thing about meatloaf, too, is you can eat it warm out of the oven or you can eat it the next day after it's been in the refrigerator. You can make a like cold meatloaf, meatloaf sandwich. sandwich. Yep, that's really good. Little mayo, little ketchup. Okay, and that's it. All right. And then what do we want to tell people about using a meat thermometer? Oh yeah, um, you always want to check it like with the beef, you want you would like uh, want to stick the uh, a thermometer in the center of the meatloaf and for the beef it's uh, roughly about 160 and for mm -hmm. turkey it should be around like 170. Yeah. So Maybe show them how you pull it out of that. Um, just go like thing. this and get it about right in the center of the meat. Yeah. It's always good to have to check it after about half an hour. It's been in the oven. And we're checking the temperature so that we know that it's cooked properly so that you won't get any kind of food And always um, wash that food thermometer illness. after you use it. Yep. And when you've got something shallow like this, it's not very thick. So you want to kind of put that in at an angle. Otherwise, if you put it right down on the pan, it's going to pick up the temperature yeah. from the pan. So stick it in at an angle and wait to see if it goes up until 160 for the meat. So there you go, you got your meatloaf, your potatoes, and some peas, and some strawberries, and a glass of skim milk for a nice good meal.